Well, a few Razorbacks that entered into the transfer portal ended up finding their new schools. And Jalen Catalan being one of the biggest names to go to one of the biggest schools. We'll talk about that as well as what it means when you're losing players to other big schools too. Portal combat still going on. We'll give you some updates on where Arkansas sits in the transfer portal and maybe some other guys that they can look to add. And also Nick Smith Jr. puts out some tweets that are quite interesting. It's all coming up on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as uh, we have a lot of things to continue to talk about. I know the national championship game happened last night as Georgia just blew out TCU, wasn't even close, sadly. Uh, but still, college football pretty much comes to an end as far as all the uh, major games and the field of play. But that doesn't mean that portal season, as well as recruiting season, as well as uh, spring practice will still be here before you know it. All those things are still going to be things that we all look forward to in the matter of college football. And one of the biggest stories for Arkansas, and this is kind of a, a story that is not shocking as far as it's being a new story or topic or anything like that. It was just a matter of time. But uh, yesterday, there were a few players for Arkansas that used to play at Arkansas that had entered into the portal, names of note, and had found new homes as far as where they're going to be transferring out into their new school. Malik Hornsby, the backup quarterback, from last season for the Razorbacks, officially landed at Texas State, and not necessarily surprising considering that uh, he is from the state of Texas. But the other name that really uh, got people talking and uh, really discussing and giving some of their reactions to it was the addition of Jalen Catalan to the University of Texas. Now, it was weird seeing Jalen Catalan tweet this out, especially in the fact that it comes with a graphic, which Pretty much at every point in time, there's going to be somebody who goes to a new school or whatnot, put out a graphic, and it's usually uh, well photoshopped. And it's one of my favorite Catalan pictures. And if you haven't seen it, uh, you can go over there, but there's no Texas graphics allowed on this podcast. But uh, it basically is him when he was a Razorback, but it's got photoshopped the uniform and the helmet and everything. And he's wearing Texas and he just says committed. And uh, along with the tweet, it just says new beginnings and has an emoji of a cow. And then hashtag AGTG. So he's moving on to Texas. And as you can imagine, Razorback fans were, uh, yeah, they weren't too big on that. And they weren't too big in the, in the fact that they are, uh, that they are losing players anyways, but especially a player like Catalan, especially going to a place like Texas, which is an old, bitter rival. Now, there is a lot of criticisms that have come along with the portal itself. I even talked about it on this podcast. I know a lot of you have either agreed or disagreed on it. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's it's just the way college football is. We all know that, and that's established. But Catalan going to Texas, you know, it, it is a deal where fans are kind of fighting within themselves when some news comes out about this. Because, again, it wasn't shocking of Catalan moving on, especially to another major school, because Jalen Catalan entered into the portal a while back. He has been taking other visits, and we know he is a high-quality player if he can stay healthy. And so him going to a big-time school like Texas is not surprising. But still, when people see it and it becomes a reality that he's going to UT to play for the Longhorns, uh, an old historic bitter rival of the Razorbacks, fans are going to have some sort of reactions and act a certain way. That's just the way fans are. And we'll talk more about fans, especially on the basketball side of things here in a second. But it's it's tough to find really where the right reaction is supposed to come from when it comes to fans. Because fans, as we know, is short for fanatics. And fanatics take everything very seriously when it comes to what they're fanatic about. They're uh, almost zealots in their own right. You know, they, every, they take everything extremely seriously. And they wear it with emotion. And so anything and everything that goes on with the thing that they are fanatics of, they are extremely emotional about it. And when it's going great, the emotions are pouring out like crazy. And when things aren't going so great, the emotions are pouring out like crazy. It's just the way it is. 
And anytime that you feel like somebody has slighted you, whether it's good or whether it's bad, whether it's right, whether it's wrong, fans are going to come out and be extremely critical. I'm not saying it is right for them to do it, but it is the way it is. And so there were quite a few fans, though, that were supportive of Jalen Catalan making his decision to go to Texas, wishing him nothing but the best of luck. And there were a lot of fans that were saying, well, good riddance. If that's the way you're going to be, go on. We're not rooting for you. Uh, we hope you don't, you know, we hope you stay healthy, but we don't hope you, you don't do anything good for him. You don't hope you uh, don't end up being successful there. And some people will look at those things and say, well, that's wrong for fans to react that way. It's almost like if the fans are being more positive about it, then they get mad at the fans who are being negative, and then the negative fans get mad at the fans who are being positive. It's just this inner fighting when it comes to things like this, where the anger and frustrations don't necessarily turn to the particular player or the particular coach or whatever. It turns to each other, where everyone starts getting mad at one another and arguing amongst themselves. My whole issue i guess with the, the whole deal with the, uh, the the transfer portal and everything and especially in this particular case where it's a player that you really liked you really counted on and that he was going to come back this year and then he doesn't instead goes to texas it's it's something to where i am i am for players finding new opportunities i think we all are if they can't if they're not playing if they're not starting then go find your fur place if your uh, coaching changes happen and your coach isn't there anymore you know, go find your place. I, I I don't have no problem with that. But it's just rubs me the wrong way sometimes where it happened last year and it's happened this year where a guy that was voted team captain last year was Joe Fouché. This year was Jalen Catalan. When a player is voted captain by his teammates and the coaches are all in on them being a captain and because they're a great representative of their team and the best of their team the best that their team has to offer really instills and embodies the type of culture and the type of mentality that the team needs to have. And then that particular individual leaves and goes to another school. And in this case, rivals of your school that hurts and that rubs people the wrong way. And I don't blame them for it rubbing them the wrong way. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out and tweet at Jalen Catalan and tell him how he's terrible and good riddance and you hope he gets hurt. Like, don't do that because that's not going to solve or help anything. All that's going to do is just vent, have you vent out your frustrations, but in the end, it's going to make you look kind of dumb. So don't do that. Don't, don't take it that personally to where you go after the particular player. But I have zero problem with Razorback fans in this particular case being bitter about it. I really don't. I again, it's it's one thing to have players leave when they're told to leave, and, and you know the loyalty thing comes into play because some players are told to leave, some players are you know uh, are brought on in the portal. Uh, I mentioned coaches leaving. You know Barry Odom was a defense coordinator and also the uh, the safeties coach this past year, and so Catalan leaving though this was before really uh, you know the Barry Odom thing became a thing, and you know maybe he had an idea about it before, so you know maybe you could take that into consideration, but. Uh, I just I just feel like this has a lot more to do with what we've been told, because the only thing we know about Catalan and him entering into the portal is that it was well as about he wanting a new fresh start. And maybe that's the truth. I'm not saying it's not. But it just is hard for me to believe that sometimes these things are just about, you know, something as simple as that, especially when there's no transparency as to what's going on and, and, and everything. So from the fans perspective, I see what you're saying. I see how you feel where you're like, hey, I'm done with this guy. But I also understand that there are fans out there that don't want players to see or what, well, you know, he was a Razorback and, you know, he, he went out there and he came back after being injured and you know, was both captain and stayed at Arkansas and all that. There's people that appreciate that. It's almost like, how do you want to see it? Do you want to see, do you want to appreciate what that player did for you? Or do you want to, do you want to go after them and criticize what they ended up doing to you? So it's either what they did for you or what they did to you. What they did for you is that Catalan, in this case, played when he was able to at a high level. His first two years were incredible. His 2020 season was outstanding. That's why he was an All-American. And then he had back-to-back season-ending injuries, and he stayed on with Arkansas. And I, I, I will admit that I never would have thought that it would actually happen or transfer, but when I started not seeing Catalan anywhere on the team or on the sidelines or anything like that, 
kind of gave the vibe that maybe this was going to happen. But then I would see him in pictures where there was some community service going on where he's with other Razorback teammates that he was a part of. So that's where it was kind of all up in the air. But I just believe that fans have a right to be upset sometimes when these things happen. But you got to channel what you're upset at. Are you upset at this particular individual? Or are you upset at, the, uh, upset at the system? Are you upset at the coaching staff? Maybe for not doing enough to keep this particular player. I mean, you can find different places and different avenues to show your frustrations, but you just got to channel it and do it the right way. Again, I don't think tweeting at players and, and telling them how awful they are is like healthy or, or solving anything or helps anything. In fact, it makes most things worse in that particular case. But I'm also not someone who's going to tell fans to shut up if you're being upset by a player leaving, especially in this particular case. Like, not all transfers are created equal. You know, a, a transfer that was a, a backup or a third stringer that never got any playing time entering into the portal is not the same as your All-American team captain safety that everyone loved and helped out with NIL and, and all of those things that was a household name and was viewed upon as being a, an outstanding captain and leader for the team. Like, not all transfer portal guys are created equal. And so when that particular one that you loved and that you went all out for and that you appreciated when they leave you and go to your rival, it's going to spark some negativity. So I, I feel you, Razorback fans. Again, I have no problem with you being upset, but you just got to channel it the right way. Uh, we'll see uh, how Catalan does at Texas. Maybe he does really well. Maybe he ends up having a, a great season and a, uh, a really great uh, you know, performance where maybe he gets all American, maybe gets drafted high. You know, maybe that happens. Maybe that happens. And if it does, oh well, like that's not going to impact you as a Razorback fan. You know, it'd be nice to have him on, but you got some safeties that are coming in. Who who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll be able to be just as good, if not better. You know, maybe maybe you end up winning out in this whole thing. So you just got to be patient on that fact. But again, I'm going to stick up with the fan for the fans in this particular case. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be bitter. It's okay to have some issues, but again, just do it the right way. Handle it the right way. You know, it's kind of like uh, if someone disappoints you or if some, you know, if a, if a person that you work with or whatever works for you, whatever it may be, they go for another job. Can you be upset about it? Sure. Can you, can you, can you be hurt by it? Sure. But you don't need to go on social media and start tweeting at the person that how horrible he is. Like you don't need to do that. So just handle it the right way. But I just wanted to stick up for the fans a little bit in this case for those people that are, uh, you know, getting after the fans for being uh, a little over the top. Uh, you know, there's a way to be able to handle it. There's a way to be able to handle it. Just make sure you handle it the right way. Uh, folks, I got to tell you, though, about Built Bar, because, listen, I have been trying my best to get after it when it comes to my New Year's resolutions of eating healthier and going to the gym more. And honestly, the gym part is easier for me. It's the eating right that makes it so difficult. But luckily with Built Bar, it helps me out in that perspective. Because what's the main thing about eating healthy that keeps us from doing it as often as maybe we should? Well, maybe the healthy foods don't taste as good. We don't have to worry about that with Built Bar because it tastes incredible. Well, it takes a lot of work to, to go in there and to, to cook some of the or make some of the healthy foods. Well, don't have to worry that with Built Bar. Because it's right there packaged and convenient for you. Oh, well, you know, it's just so expensive. You know, organic means basically Latin for expensive. Well, no, not with Built Bar because they're extremely affordable. So there's really no excuse. Built Bar will be able to help you out where they're covered in 100% chocolate, only 130 calories, and have 17 grams of protein in each and every bar. So you got to check them out. And not only can you go to Built.com and check out all the different flavors and, and ways to order them, but also, for all you people in Arkansas, I know you've heard of this place before. It's called Walmart and Sam's Club. They also have them available there as well. So you can grab a 13-bar box over there at Sam's, or maybe you want to go get the four-bar box over at Walmart's. Whatever it is, check it out, Built Bar, and I promise you will not be disappointed at your local Walmart or at your local Sam's Club. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast and uh, giving a little update on uh, Portal, or as a few people have coined it, the Portal Combat that uh, seems to be going on. 
again, if you haven't checked it out, go over to hogsports.com. Trey Biddy, Danny West, those guys do a phenomenal job of uh, putting these things together as far as people that are in the transfer portal that are already coming to Arkansas, ones that are taking visits, ones that are extremely interested. And uh, as of right now, Arkansas has eight players out of the transfer portal. And I know that sometimes people forget that, yes, it, they do indeed have it. But, uh, yeah, they got eight players out of it. And as of right now, you got Joshua Braun, the offensive lineman, Jacoby Criswell, quarterback, Andrew Armstrong, wide receiver. You got John Morgan. A lot of people forget about him. John Morgan from Pittsburgh, uh, linebacker. For, he's 6'2", 265. You got Antonio Greer. He's also the linebacker from UCF that made it official just the other night. Uh, you got Al Walcott and Lorendo Johnson, two defensive backs, one's a safety, one a cornerback, both from Baylor. And also you got a preferred walk-on in this particular case of Marlon Crockett, who's a wide receiver, 6'4", 208, redshirt freshman, where he is coming from Memphis. Now you have some people, though, that are really high on the board for Arkansas. Like, for instance, Xavier Weaver, he's a wide receiver out of USF. You got Kane Barong, who's a tight end out of Notre Dame, 6'4", 243. Be nice to get him as well as the tight end from North Texas, Jake Roberts, 6'5", 250. Both of those are really looking good for Arkansas. Uh, Isaac Tesla, I still think that's how you say his name. That's the way I'm going to say it. Uh, he's from Hillsdale College. A lot of people probably don't know uh, much about that or when they see it, they're like, oh, my gosh, wh where is that? Why would you want them? Well, he's a kid that has so many different offers from a lot of big-time schools at wide receiver. So 6'4", 210 for him. Uh, Dante Thornton was the one that Arkansas was really high on, but he committed to uh, Tennessee officially yesterday. So he's a wide receiver and also another safety DJ Taylor from Arizona state who they're looking at and possibly bringing in. So you still got some guys out there in the mix and the possibility of them being able to uh, step right in and be able to, to make some things happen there too. So they got other people that are coming up for visits. They got other guys they are going to be looking at. And again, like I talked about in the podcast last week, a lot of the players are few of the players you got out of the portal last year weren't until later, like in late January or even May or in some case, or March or even May. So sometimes it can be uh, put forth and, and looked at a little bit differently when it comes to uh, when those players will be actually officially added in as well. And I know that there's some people that try to look at, uh, you know, rankings when it comes to, you know, how, how are teams doing and, uh, you know, what, what's it looking like for them and, and everything, which I think for Arkansas, They've done a pretty good job. It's not over yet. There's still a lot of time uh, left in and when it comes to uh, the portal situation that they find themselves in. But it's still hard to almost like keep up with uh, so many times, especially uh, with everything going on. But Arkansas right now is, as far as the transfer portal rankings go, according to 24-7 Sports, is sitting at 25th in the country. Uh, no surprise that Colorado and Florida State are two of the highest ones. And LSU is there at three. As we all know, LSU likes to likes to do some transfer portal things. But Arkansas is the 25th. I think they'll continue to move up, especially as they get uh, more of these guys in place because they still have a lot of scholarship available, and uh, they'll continue to move forward. So uh, I, you know, some people have looked at the portal rankings and maybe the players that they brought in and maybe not be feeling as high and mighty as they once did or maybe not as great as and confident as they did at this point in time last year. But I still feel like the portal is going to – put you in a great position to have at least some intriguing additions that might be able to really add something immediately. I was even talking with some buddies about uh, the safeties that they're trying to, one of the safeties that they brought in and also some of the safeties that they're trying to bring in. And, you know, people were like, oh, okay, well, what can they do? What all that? Well, here's the thing. I'm not saying that this should be the way you look at it all the time, but when it comes to safeties, you are already better right now than what you were last year because safety position was that bad. You were, trash at safeties and it's really i think the most disappointing thing about the safeties and last year is that not only was your defense in general really bad in the secondary but the safeties coach was barry odom and safeties were not good and the defensive uh play even though it was good at times overall wasn't great so that was disappointing but already you're better at safety so if you just look through the position group i'm not trying to make too much out of it but just Let's look at right now, at this point in time, on what was it even today? January 10th, January 10th, 2023, the year of our Lord. Let's look at it right now and see by positions, who do you feel like is going to be better? Who do you feel like is going to be worse? And who do you feel like is going to be the same right now? Offense, quarterback, better. I think, you know, KJ's, you can only imagine when Kendall Browse is going to improve. So 
He's going to be better. You got better backups with Criswell and Malachi Singleton already. So you're better there. All right. Running back. Better. Again, you're going to have Rocket Sanders back. Hopefully, Dominic Johnson can find a way to get healthy. It'd be nice to have him back in the mix, but you're still going to have AJ Green, Rashad Dabinian. Uh, you had another four star running back coming out of high school. So you may be just as good, but you'll, you would think with development and everything and continued added depth, you will be better. You'll be better next year at the running back position. All right. Wide receiver, right now, you're worse. Let's be honest about it. Um, you have potential there. You have some guys that may be able to get into the mix, but right now, you are worse at the wide receiver position. No question about it. Offensive line, I think you will be just as good, I think, as of right now. It, it's hard to say exactly who will be in the mix there as far as who's going to be the starting five out there. But you have some pieces coming back from this past season. You added some pieces as well. Joshua Braun, we mentioned him from Florida. Um, I think you'll have, with Sam Pittman and Cody Kennedy, you're always going to have a solid offensive line. So I think as of right now, I'll say they'll be just as good. Could be better. Wouldn't think they'd be worse, but right about the same. Defensive line. I think you'll be about the same. Now, you lost some big pieces there. Uh, guys you were helping to count on, like Isaiah Nichols. Uh, lost him. Jordan Dominic lost him. But you still got some guys that you added into the mix, and you also have some players that are still coming back. I still really like a guy like Landon Jackson. I thought he did a really good job. Uh, I'd like to see how he continues to develop, especially off the edge. Uh, so you got some guys there in D-line. So I think they'll be just as good, maybe worse, just depending on how it goes. But I lean towards just as good. Linebacker, as of right now, Okay, so this one's a tough one because I think just because Drew Sanders was so incredible and Bumper Pool was so solid that you feel like it's going to take at least a little bit of a step back. That being said, though, I really love what Jordan Crook and Chris Paul bring. They potentially could be better in, in other regards, or at least as a collective group, be better. We'll have to wait and see, but I like the additions that they have at least tried to get after when it comes to coaching these guys up and developing them. And I think that those guys will have all the potential in the world to be really great linebackers. So, again, right now I'm leaning towards worse, but with high ceiling and a high potential to where it could be just as good, maybe even better. And then you look at the secondary. I already mentioned safeties. You're better at safeties already. And cornerback, you're going to be just as good, if not better, because you have Dwight McLaughlin coming back. You have Quincy McAdoo has proven himself to be a really great uh, cornerback where if you continue with the development there, you're adding some guys in from the portal. See who can play that nickelback position. That's going to be the key. So I'll say just as good, maybe even better. Because again, development matters. A year of offseason matters. And if you continue to add some depth and get some guys at the portal, you'll be in great shape. So all those things put together, folks, I think you'll be and potentially could be a better team. It's going to come down to that wide receiver group. And it's going to come down to D-line and linebacker. Like, you know, there's possibilities there. And honestly, the wide receiver group is the only one that I'm like, no way that this team right now is better or could be better or could be just as good. Just because there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of unknown, and they're still working on a lot of guys in the portal. But the point is, is that you're still in good shape with the coaching changes you made, with the recruits that you're bringing in, and the portal guys you're bringing in. I really like what, uh, you know, some of the guys that you're going to be having. Oh, and can't forget tight end position where I think you're going to be just as good, at least. If you add these other two guys in there, you might probably will be better the guys that you've signed and everything. So it's going okay. It's going fine. Still got a lot of work to do, but there's potential there to where this team can be just as good, if not better on paper, on paper, talent-wise, overall, across the board, than what they were last year. But we got to wait and see. And as we all know, the key to that is staying healthy. Uh, we'll talk a little basketball and Nick Smith and some important tweets that he put out coming up on the other side of the break. So stay with us here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, another thing that fans really had a lot of reactions to, because that's really what sometimes I do these podcasts and basing on is just how, what fans are talking about and what fans are doing and everything. And uh, I'll say this, that this whole Nick Smith Jr. deal has been um, frustrating to say the least for me, I have come out and I have said that I believe Nick Smith will play again for the Razorbacks this year. I believe that from what I've heard from people that I know and trust, if he is 100% healthy, if he's good to go, he will play for the Razorbacks this year. And when I say that, I have people in the comments and, and tweeting at me being like, yeah, right, whatever, he's done, 
like all this stuff. And, you know, they had the NBA executive coming out. It's like, ah, he won't play again. And, oh, his agent's Rich Paul. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not going to, he's going to get, he's going to get uh, shut down. It's not going to happen. And my thing is, is, you know what? Maybe, maybe if he's not, but it, I don't think it's going to be because he doesn't want to play for Arkansas. That's not what's going to be. The only way he, Nick Smith does not play this year, folks, is if he does, if he is not healthy enough to play. That's it. Okay. He's not going to get shut down when he's 100% healthy. He's not going to be told to not play by anybody if he's 100% healthy. If he is 100% healthy, he will play again this year. May not be till February, but it'll be this year. He's going out to California and getting treatment. And for those of you who are saying, well, what about his school? We need him eligible. Stop. Stop. You don't think that they're taking care of that? I mean, at the worst case scenario, you don't think that there's this thing called online that, you know, everyone knew during COVID times that that's how people went to school. I don't think he can do that. And also, who cares? It's his life and his decision. And as long as he's eligible to play, then he'll play. Who cares? Stop bringing up these straw man arguments. Well, well what about the grades? Who cares? He's not going to be here next year. He's going to the NBA. All you should ever want him to do is come back and play if he's 100% healthy. That's it. But people were really putting out some dumb things on social media, so much so that Kamani Johnson, who is a, a guy I really like, I really love hearing from Kamani, and I'm going to try to get him on the podcast here very soon. He goes out on Twitter and says, man, I'm going to say this once. We're a brotherhood. Lil Nick, which is his Twitter handle, uh, Nick Smith, is a part of that brotherhood. And if you're talking down on him, you ain't with us because he's with us. All love. And then Nick Smith quote tweets and says, it'll all make sense later. I'm not here to talk. I'm here to work. And then he says, uh, hashtag LIF3 uh, by TTG, hashtag WPS. That last hashtag is something you all need to understand and realize. Folks, the only thing that you need to do with Nick Smith and the only like opinion that you need to have of Nick Smith is just hoping and praying that he gets healed up, gets better 100% as quickly as possible so he can get back on the floor for your Arkansas Razorbacks. That is the only opinion that you need to have. All right? This is a guy who has been on the sidelines every single chance he's gotten to be with his team, to coach up his team, to be on the floor. He has done everything that he possibly can. And if you think that he's just out in California with his thumb up his rear end, not doing anything, but making sure that he does all the things to get himself ready to come back to Arkansas, then you are sorely mistaken. Stop. Stop making this more difficult than what it needs to be. Because what you do is all it does is make people on the team mad at the fans. And whether it's not, it's not all the fans either. But that's the way it's going to be portrayed. They're going to get mad at the fans. They're going to talk to each other. You don't think Nick Smith could talk to some other players too that potentially looking at Arkansas coming out of high school? Man, don't go there. They're tough on you. You know, if, if you're hurt, they're going to get mad at you and start spreading these rumors about you that you don't want to play if you're hurt. You think that's going to bode well? Stop. Don't tweet at him. Don't tweet about him. You don't know. I don't know. The only people that knows is Nick Smith and his people around him, and Eric Musselman, and all of them are saying the exact same thing. So I'm going to go with them, not you. Sorry. Handle yourselves appropriately in this matter. You know, we talked earlier about the Jalen Catalan thing and how I understand why fans are mad and bitter. This one I do not. Be better than that. Wish him the best. Hope he gets back with the Razorbacks because they need him, and hopefully he can get them ready in February to make a great run into March. That's all you need to say, and that's the only opinion you need to have. Just saying. Appreciate everybody listening into the Arkansas Razorbacks Locked On podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.